What's up guys, Lindsay here. Are you in the mood to cringe? Cause uh, this shit, this shit right here is full of cringe. You know what's even more cringe? Is the week after this came out, I was in the comic book shop and I was talking about the Pumpkinhead comic with the comic guy and some other guy in there. It was like 40 years old, straight up nerd type guy. New stuff about monster movies, so I'm into that. And then when I go back to browsing, I hear he requests this comic. He missed it. He wanted this. He wanted She-Hulk. And that's just... Why would you ever? Anytime I buy something that I know is bad, I purposely tell the guy. I'm like, I'm only buying this because I think it's going to be bit real bad. And guess what? This comic delivers. It is... So bad. Let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. So... We see that Jennifer and her friend here are at a high school prom, even though they're both adults with no children, and um, ugh, they're talking about their favorite prom movies, which I mean, like, OMG, girl, like, totally, am I right? Also, women don't have to like prom, but also they, like, totally do, oh my god, you know, it's like, have, ugh, ugh, I hate. I hate feminism. Alternately, Ghost World, if you have a more pessimistic view of prom, is just another step toward the inevitable disappointment of adulthood. Okay. This is this is a real trend. I haven't read a lot of cringe comics, but I can tell you that depression and unfulfillment are uh, practically a staple of the cringe genre. And you know what? I get it. I'm youngish. Everybody my age is depressed. Life isn't what we want it to be. Everybody's poor, all this, but it's like, I read the comics, I don't want to be reminded of that. It's like, these are fictional characters, God forbid, they be slightly happy about anything. Uh, and it's just, it's a reflection of the writers too, and it's just like, you're writing a comic book, this is your job. And I know you probably don't make a lot of money on it, but still, this is, this can survive. This can be your legacy. Most people don't get legacies after they die, but you have the potential to have a legacy. And I, they don't appreciate the fact that Inaki... What is her name? Mari, oh no, Inaki is on Ragman. Mariko Tamaki is the worst. Okay, so you're going to notice a theme there of describing being She-Hulk as being green. Now this is a clue that... Mariko Tabaki has no clue about what it means to be a Hulk or anything. She just says it's green. She sees Jennifer as a regular human, not green, turns into Hulk, now she's green. That's it. That's the extent of Mariko Tabaki's knowledge of Hulk. And you know what? I'm not a big Hulk fan. Definitely not a big She-Hulk fan. But you know what? I'd probably do a little bit of research so I could describe what happens to her when she becomes Hulk instead of being called green or gray. And you know what? I'd let that slide maybe if it was mentioned once. It's mentioned like three times. It's just being described as going green. And it's just so lazy. Ugh. And so her God, her dumb friend is a, like, I didn't think we were going to be going to prom. I thought we were going to talk about all the changes that are happening in your life, Jen Walters. Which is a weird way to refer to your friend. See also She-Hulk in the colors green and gray. <laughs> and so she says, like, it's am amazing how you managed to dress for prom when I didn't even tell you we were going to prom. Which is also completely unrealistic. Just imagine if your your friend was like, hey, meet me here, and you get there and it's high school prom. Guess what? You turn around and you go home. You're not dealing with that. Ever. So her friend fires back with, also, you're dodging the question. There was no question. You just presented an idea. Hey, I thought we were going to talk about this. Then her friend brings up her dress, and she says that. So there wasn't even a question there. Mariko. Oh, God. You know what? She just got another job. Jesus. What? What? Ugh. I've, I've had proof that I actually read a comment. Get me a job. I'll just be an editor. I know. I'm very fond of grammar. Get me in those offices, guys. So Jen, Jennifer says, what's to say? I'm back. I'm green. Not now, obviously. Ugh. And you find out the whole reason she's here at a prom. Even though two adults at a prom with no kids 
very suspect behavior, even if they're attractive looking women, still sketchy, still want to want them to be vetted. You find out that Jennifer represented a woman in a case and she lost and she said she told her she would keep an eye on her daughter. Now, when people say that, they don't mean it literally. They don't mean physically be looking at my daughter the majority of the time. It's just like, hey, check in every once in a while. So, just the premise of this is so ridiculous. Ugh, and it's this girl. You found out that she's a mutant. She has fire powers, you know. And, um... Jesus. Okay, you find out that this... Me this kid's mutant and she's extra special. And then she, the, her fr God, her friend mentioned, mentioned. See, also, my previous comment. Green and gray. This isn't how people talk. And also, like, you're trivializing a Hulk. Even if it's just She-Hulk, you're trivializing it as just as if her skin color changes and nothing else changes. And the way she acts when she's transformed is... Is basically no difference at all. The whole appeal of Bruce Banner is it's basically like a werewolf. He's this really rational guy and then he has this insane physical change that completely envelops his brain and his brain power and he becomes a completely different beast. She-Hulk doesn't have that. Now I've never read She-Hulk before because I don't know if that's her thing but it just seems really lazy, and I don't know if she has also a mental change or whatever. But you find out that the kid is extra special because she's also the first mutant ever to run for class president at any school in the New York State area. First of all, how do you know that? How could you possibly know that? There's probably some been some mutants who were pl class pl president on the DL. And also, why even make a big deal about this? It's... Yeah, they even have, like, these anti-mutant people who are, like, what does he say? Let them run our schools, and it's just like, wait, wait. In New York, is school, is class president a real position? Because I know in my school, it's a sham position. It's just you get voted it, and then that's it. I don't think anything happens. You don't even really get a lot, you don't get any benefits. You don't even really have to do extra meetings. It's just like, every once in a while, they'll be like, uh, who's class president? We need you to talk to everybody for a second. It's not a real thing. So don't be worried about mutants taking over. And then, I'll skip this page, but you find out that Jennifer lost a case that is clearly self-defense. This guy was attacking the mom and her daughter with a hammer. And, of course, the mom... Defended herself and punched that guy. One hitter quitter. Because women are the most powerful beings and all. And I can say that because I'm biased. And I, even though I am a woman, I can tell you I can punch out any man in a, just a second flat. You blink, you're down. Women are the most powerful. And also the most gentle. And also the most caring. And also the smartest. Our brains are physically smaller. But you know what to say about small packages. So obviously now I have learned that Jennifer is literally the worst lawyer of all time. This mom could have represented herself and got off. But I don't even know what Jennifer would have had to have said to lose it. I think it's trying to be like, oh man, look at people hate mutants. Mutants are black people. They're always going to go to jail. Every time. No matter what. No matter all the evidence. I don't know. It's just lazy and stupid. So... We get Jennifer and her dumb friend talking some more. She mentions talking about going green again because that's literally all that happens in her transformation, I guess. But I feel like you could, if you were a good writer, you could explain. You could elucidate your point of what happens in the transformation or whatever. But, you know, that's too much to ask is to be good at your job. And you find out that her firm is also a jerk. They don't want a lot of mutant represent mutant cases because you know it's trouble. Frankly, it is. Just take one every once in a while. They did their one. It's okay. So we see that the class president is about to give a talk, and of course, something bad happens. Mutant projectors. Oh no! That's literally the ma 
most people aren't protecting anybody. But then look at this. Is this school is this school located in just Times Square? Like where is the school located? Also this just play the YouTube video, alright? And this is gonna bring up something that I mentioned in past videos is if you're anti mutant. If you know that those muty babies gotta be boarded or be born and used in some sort of entertainment hunting survival of the fittest or for their bodies to be used as meat or just have just completely exploit their powers for your own personal gain of course I understand that it makes sense to me but you cannot get together like this to protest those damn muties they're literally even the worst mutant is gonna be way more powerful than probably the average human so you don't wanna get all grouped together cause that's literally a big target on your back you're just asking for trouble you're just gonna fucking die yeah you flipped a limo but ugh and also just the stereo of course he has a goatee now I'm gonna show you I don't even know if you're ready for it the greatest she-hulk hulk transformation scene I have ever had the privilege to witness and I'm going to share that with you guys. And I'm going to suggest that you go out and buy this comic so you can just look at it whenever you want. Just be like, oh, that's so powerful. That's so well written and so well drawn. And I really feel the power and the ferocity of the character. And I feel how she feels about pro-mutant rights. Okay, so let's remember. Let's remember. We see her here. We see these damn dummies out here talking about muties. And then... And then we just see a green fucking hand. That's, that is it. Okay, okay. Literally. Just what? Why? Why? The whole point, the whole appeal of the whole comics is sort of going out of control and trans transforming. Literally transforming into a new creature, basically. And the way you illustrated that. The coolest part of the character, the transformation scene, the coolest visual component of this to going from a regular human to a Hulk. And the way you showed that is, you just showed a green hand gripping a car. That's just straight up unbelievable to me. It's so ridiculous. You didn't even have like a... You didn't even have a thing where it was her before and then slowly changed or... Something, you just showed me a green hand. So stupid, so lazy. This person doesn't need to be writing comics. She literally wrote like, uh, Jennifer and her friend are in, at the prom. Mutant protesters. Uh, Jennifer is the Hulk now. And she grips a car. Just, like, just imagine that on like a script page. Jennifer is the Hulk now. Get out of there. And she just, th she throws a limo. And she has a whole thing with this, the main bad guy. And he's like, <sighs> he says, I'm not scared of you. And he has a gun and she's bulletproof. And you scare me too. You scare the crap out of me. You and everything you represent. Ugh. And also, I, I, I forgot to point out that these guys said they were fighting for bio rights, which mutants are literal, their genetics are different. But it's still their biology, so saying bio rights isn't even... If you're gonna protest mutants and probably die, have good slogans. At least die with a good slogan on your tongue as you take your last breath. And then, obviously, I didn't even notice this, like, Nazi symbolism there. Oh, what could it mean? I don't know. But... It's just so fucking stupid. She's like, also, I'm a scary monster and a lawyer. But technically, I just threw a limo at you. And she's got him gripped by the throat. And then she just drops him. And what is the appeal of this character? I I guess the whole series has basically been, oh, she's lose, been losing control as the Hulk. So now she turns into the Hulk, but literally acts the exact same. You know what? I like reading a Hulk story where see, he doesn't destroy everything. I like reading a Hulk story where he doesn't completely take over a planet and then return to Earth because he's pissed off that they sent him into space. I like a picture. I like a Hulk comic where he just sits there. 
And that's what you get with She-Hulk. That's the kind of shit you get with She-Hulk. And that's the kind of shit you're going to be getting with that X-23 comic. So everybody be looking out for Mariko Tamaki. It's, her name has good alliteration. And then also I just want to point out that her friend is obviously Batgirl. This is obviously a Batgirl clown. I don't know. And then she quits her job at being a lawyer because that's always good. It's always good to be quitting your job for no damn reason. Just this, I, I just can't believe it. that transformation scene is so stupid and lazy. And just the whole idea of it. All she did was throw a car. And she definitely didn't kill anybody. And then she had the guy and she's like, you're lucky that I'm basically the same now because of therapy or something. Mm. Guy. And he's supposed to be a Nazi... Anyway, so isn't their whole thing punching him? And it's just... Silly me thought something would happen. Silly me thought that something would happen in a comic. I was in the wrong. Me. We all were. We gotta get better at lowering the expectations of everything. Because this Mariko Tamaki trade ain't stopping. Don't forget to subscribe because I gotta start doing some more cringe comics because this is just awful, awful garbage.